everyone. Uh, my name is Beth. I'm a clinical certified aromatherapist. I'm going to just tell you, uh, just take like a quick five minutes and tell you about myself so you know why I can stand up here and um, talk to you about oil. So I've been a scientist for 25 years. The first 17 was studying virology um, and the last eight was uh, cancer biology. So over at the medical college. So a lot of molecular biology, biochemistry, genetics, um, did a lot of studying of science and I've always loved smells even from a little girl I don't know if you guys ever loved the scratch and sniff stickers that was like my first love of scent you know um, but in 2015 uh, well I'll go back uh, I'll rewind a little bit so I, when I was 25 and I'm much much older now um, <laughs> when I was 25 uh, I had a back a chronic back injury began and they didn't really know what to do with me uh, they wanted to send me to a pain clinic and I really didn't have interest in taking medication for my entire life. And my neighbor was a massage therapist and she had given me some oils and said, here, this will help. So she gave it to me and it really, really did help. And many years went along and I was using the oils and then my science brain kicked in like, well, why do these work? Because my first experience with oils was spa, right? It wasn't like mm -hmm. for health issues. Um, and so I decided to go all in because I don't do things small and I decided to get my clinical certification at the American College of Healthcare Sciences out in Oregon. Um, and in 2015, I graduated with my certification, but on that journey, in the middle of my training, my son was diagnosed with cancer and I had started to use it with him for pain, anxiety, you know, all the things. And it really made a difference. And I worked with this oncologist. You know, we worked together to do the best we could for my son. Um, and it was really helpful. And I remember the nurses saying to me, well, why aren't you doing something with this? And I was like, well, I'm busy, got a job, my kid is sick, you know. Um, but, you know, eventually I felt a divine calling, so to be divine aromatherapy, to step out, put my toe in the water, and really um, take a step forward. So, you know, 25 years of science. Um, in 2015, I got my clinical certification and I began Be Divine as a side gig. Um, and, you know, May of 2022, I put down my pipette after 25 years at the medical college and went and started doing this full time. So I was trained in the clinical way of aromatherapy, which is a little different than other training. Um, and so we're gonna actually go through a whole broad range of things. I will try and stop and ask questions. Uh, I hope I don't talk at you too much. Please feel free to raise your hand um, and, and you know jump in if there's something that you don't understand. Um, and I'll just say, so Veritas Aromatics is the consulting side. So I do professional consultation with people who need more specific, if you have specific needs, um, and you want to focus on that, you know, we can meet and we can go through the whole journey together and we can work using aromatherapy to complement uh, your needs. And then if you're somebody who just love oils, we, I have Be Divine, which is my product side, where you can just buy them right off the shelf. But you'll learn maybe what you need more once we go through this. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, what is aromatherapy? So a very flat answer is aromatherapy is the controlled use of essential oils to promote the health and vitality of the body, mind, and spirit. That's you know the book term, I guess. Uh, a scent neurologist said it perfectly in my mind. I, I heard her at a meeting and she said, aromatherapy is really that very second that your nose hits the scent, whether it's an oil or it's a food, and you have an emotional response to it. You know, there are many things that go on, but you have an emotional response and let's say it's good. Well, then that positive response is giving feedback to your brain and creating changes within your body. So that's the very beginning of aromatherapy is your experience. Um, so as we go through this, I'll tell you that if I shove a bottle of lavender in your nose and you don't like it, it's really hard to overcome that because scents bring a lot of triggers. They bring a lot of memories. You know, eucalyptus reminds me of my honeymoon and spearmint gum reminds me of my childhood.
but you know, you stick valerian in my nose and I gag, you know. So as we go through this, just know that there's so many great oils. And if you don't like one, one, never apologize. And two, there's a million out there, not a million, but there's one <laughs> that you can find and treat with. Um, okay, so how do you use essential oils? So many of you know this because you're users, but there's so many ways to use them. Uh, for your pain, mood, energy, focus, sleep, skin, relaxation. We talked about cleaning. Um, there's a lot on the slide and not that you have to read it. And the key points that I want you to know about essential oils is that they're really concentrated. And the reason that we can smell them is because of a term called volatile, which means that these molecules are small enough that when they hit the warm air, they go into the air and they disperse and you're smelling it. So it's because oils are volatile that we can smell them. Uh, what's important to understand is there are large molecules. This is a little bit of nerding out, but there are large molecules and smaller molecules. And these will be important a little later. I'll share with you why it actually matters. But the large molecules, you know how they say patchouli, you know, the the older it sits, the better it is. It's because it's a large molecule and it can sit for years and years when it's not in the presence of air and it actually gets richer. Whereas a lighter molecule, the smaller ones are usually like what we call the top note. So if you open up something, the first scent that you smell is that top note. But why it's really important to understand this is because small molecules evaporate quicker, which means that your oil breaks down quicker. So certain oils are going to break down quicker based on their volatility. So citrus oils, all citrus oils, I'll just say all citrus oils break down very quickly. So we like to treat them extra special because we don't uh, want them to break down. So does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So the role of essential oil and emotion. So I am reading this book, uh, her name is Rachel Hers. She does a lot of uh, neurology based on the science of scent and how scent impacts people. Um, and uh, scent is such a powerful thing that I think I take for granted. You know, I just go around every day and I smell. But there have been studies to show that, you know, if you, ha if you lose your sense of smell, it can actually cause you to be depressed. Um, people who deal with SAD, seasonal affective disorder, actually have a heightened sense of smell. Very interesting. Um, so, it, you know, recognizing that odor and emotion association, scent has the strongest connection to your emotion of any scent, of any of the five senses that we possess. Um, and we can harness that. Uh, we have odor evoked memories. So memories trigger scent to be, they're, when they're triggered by scent, they're way more emotional and way more powerful. Um, and the strength of the odor evoked memory. So scent triggered memories are often stronger than words, sounds, any of the other scents. So scent is really significant um, and the impact on the brain. So I love this, the nerd part of me, and I'll show you a bigger picture later, but it goes straight to your amygdala, which is your emotional center. And so it has direct access as you're inhaling um, so essential oils are more than just a pretty smell. They're actually very functional. Um, so how do oils work? You know, the short of it is, is you smell the oil and the way I like to think about it in a bottle is, you know, there's thousands of molecules in this bottle and they're going up into your nose and then they're going to your olfactory receptors and to this epithelium that's right here. They're like two little sticky stamps. That's how I think about it and then to this epithelium, and then it goes, uh, these impulses. It's like a, a lock and key mechanism where those molecules go up into that epithelium and they find their puzzle piece and they lock in and when they do, then they start sending impulses to your brain. Um, and then it goes to your limbic system and your amygdala. So it's very powerful, very quick. So when we talk about inhalation, and we'll talk about that again later, Inhalation, I think, is one of the most powerful ways you can experience oils because it literally has direct access to your brain. Mm -hmm. This is just a cute little, <laughs> it's a lot though. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we've been talking, even before we started, ways to use them. 
So diffusers, room sprays, inhaler patches, um, and I'll get up and show you those in a minute. Diffuser jewelry, so I have all my jewelry today. Yes, I'm still, I'm still here. Um, <laughs> personal inhalers and wax melts. And I think I probably missed some, so I'd love for people to chime in. Is there any other ones that I missed? For how you use them? Yeah. Just applying right on your skin? Or like using a... Oh, I, I, sorry, just for diffusion and in, inhalation. Oh, okay, Are there any okay. other ways? Okay. No, okay. So I'm gonna just show you um, patches because I love these and I think they're wonderful. And because I'm talking, I can put a ring just so I know what happened. <laughs> so this is an inhalation patch. These are really uh, different and new. So you open it up like a little Band-Aid. What you have is a little sticky tab and you peel it off. What you have is an essential oil piece that's on the dot. Mm -hmm. And it works through inhalation only, not absorption. So there are people that are very sensitive to, you know, with oils on their skin. This they can use because it doesn't touch their skin. Um, if you are in a nursing home or a care facility, really easy to put on. We use these for sundowning patients when they're sundowning, where the care patients can just put them on and you know the staff doesn't have to do anything. Um, me, I'm having a really busy day and I don't have time to do anything else. I can use this. And the way that it works is you put it right around your clavicle and it warms up. Um, and then you are the only person smelling it all day. So really personal, really easy. It's a one-time use, um, but I love these. Mm -hmm. um, is everybody familiar with wax melts? No. Yes. No? No, never heard of it. <laughs> so this is a wax melt warmer. It has a plug. And what you do is you put like two of the melts in here. And as it warms up, you can smell it in the air. So mm -hmm. it's a way of diffusion. Um, mm -hmm. It's just a pretty way of diffusion. Um, we have a, a bunch of other things that we were talking about earlier. We have these beautiful flowers that are porcelain. You can put a couple drops of oil on here and it diffuses through the air, um, what we call passive. So there's two types of diffusion. There's active and passive. Active is the water where it's spitting out into the air. This is passive where the warm of the room is warming it up. The difference is that obviously the water can go throughout the room. These are meant for your immediate space. So on your desk, on your bed stand, um, you know, somewhere within your vicinity, these mm -hmm. are really nice. And you just put the oil right on top of that? Mm -hmm. Just two or three drops and okay. all day long. Wow. It, yeah, it's like mm -hmm. 24 hours. Oh, cool. um, and you know, they come in all different forms. If you're looking for them, you can find them. We have a little travel one that's just clay. You know, there are other types that I'm sure you've all seen. These, these are car clips, so you stuff them in your car and you put one drop on and put it on your vent and then you let the air do the work. Mm. Yeah, so there's lots of ways of diffusion. And then the final one, my favorite, is the inhaler. Um, so this is an inhaler and when you unscrew it, you hold your nose and you inhale. Now they say that when you inhale, you inhale up to 70%. When you put stuff on your skin, it's only like 10%. Mm. So you're having a panic attack, you're having a migraine, you just need, I mean, the oils within five minutes, your blood detects the oils. So that's also very quick. But I don't know about you, if you've ever had a panic attack, can't get it in quick enough. So, um, so these are really uh, also a great and effective way to use aromatherapy. Mm -hmm. um, and then, So topical application, there's bath, shower products, roll-ons, body lotions and oils, ointments, balms. Did I miss anything? And I think the key here is, and because you guys have all used essential oils, you know, people will say to me, well, is a roll-on better and an inhaler better? It's really how it's going to work best for you and what's easiest for you. I always tell people, if you're not going to use it, 
you know, this is not the method for you. The idea is to make it simple and easy for you to use. So essential oils are really, really concentrated. I am a visual person, so when I look at that 15 mil bottle of lemon oil, there's 75 lemons in there. I had my math wrong, I had to go back and check it. 75 lemons, which turns out to be like, in 15 mils, what is that, like two lemons? Um, that's very concentrated. And so we're gonna, when we get to ingestion, we'll come back to this. Rose, 2,000 petals mm -hmm. or 30 flowers in one drop. That's why rose oil is so expensive. Uh, jasmine, 2,000 pounds of flour equals one pound of oil. Very mm -hmm. expensive. Mm -hmm. Sandalwood tree, it's 30 years before you can get the oil and then they have to cut down the tree. Mm -hmm. So like frankincense where there's resin and you can continue to tap the tree, sandalwood is um, totally cut down. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, you can never use it again. So we, I don't have a slide for this, but I wanted to talk about sustainability a little bit and mm -hmm. treating our earth kindly. Mm -hmm. So there is, um, and I can, if you're interested, I can give you the information afterwards. Uh, there is a woman named Kelly Ablard and she is working with sustainability um, and she has an institute that she set up because we cannot sustain the amount of oil use that we're using in the world um, and we're having to find ways to be more responsible. Um, and I've actually taken some of the oils like rosewood out of my blends because it's on the red list, which is considered extinct. Mm -hmm. um, my sandalwood only comes from Australia and it only comes from a sustainable farm because it is also very close to being on the red list. Um, mm -hmm. So as I you know, work with oils, I'm very cognizant of only using what I need and being thoughtful of what's on the endangered list and, and what can I do differently <clears throat> to get away from certain oils. So as you go on your journey, think about that too of, you know, how can you be kind to the earth? How can you uh, responsibly use your oils? Mm -hmm. Let's uh, talk about some debunk debunking myths. And, um, and we're free to get a discussion going about mm -hmm. this. I love discussion. Um, but therapeutic grade is not a thing. It's a marketing term. Um, and I'll show you a little bit more as a clinical aromatherapist, the metrics I use for my oil so that I can be confident. But therapeutic grade is not a thing. If you hear somebody saying that, they're trying to invoke trust and they're trying to make your oil seem better. But I'm gonna teach you how to know your oil is actually good. Um, what we do care about is therapeutic margin. That is a thing. So essential oils are considered to work because of what we call therapeutic margin. A little bit works, a lot can be dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, so we always work within that therapeutic margin to make sure that there's enough, but not so much. I always tell people, my son was on Viscristine, and if you look it up, it's this beautiful, uh, it's a chemotherapy drug. It's a beautiful pink white flower, and it's beautiful, it's natural. And just enough of it kills his cancer, too much of it kills him. Mm -hmm. So there are reasons to be careful, even though oils are natural, too much can be harmful. Mm -hmm. um, and then essential oils do not have an ingestion grade. Um, that's also not a thing. Um, I was trained in ingestion. I would not suggest that anybody without training ingest. And even then I was taught to ingest for a certain amount of time because um, oils filter themselves through the kidney and liver and you don't want to overtax your organs. Um, I think the most important thing is not that it's ingestion grade, it's what are the quality of your oils? Are they good, are they not? And certainly if you're ingesting and there's chemicals in there, that mm -hmm. can be very dangerous. Um, so it's really important to have a company that you know, that you trust. I don't buy any oils from anybody who won't give me the testing data. If they don't give me the testing data, I will not buy it. Because if I make sleepy time for you and I tell you it's going to sleep, I want it to help you sleep every time. And the only thing that's going to do that is the chemistry profile. 
Um, so really the t t takeaway is people, you know, know where you're getting your oils, trust your sources, understand what's in them. So how are they made? Is anybody familiar with how they're made? Okay. I'm, I get so into it that I'm like, oh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> so distillation, distillation is so much fun that I have nerded out to watch videos, but it's where they put the plant material into the distiller and then they um, use heat and they use water and then the oil comes off. That's a very crude way of saying it. Um, expression is where they take these spikes and they spike the fruit and they get the oil using the spikes. When you are buying citrus oils, there are, you can get your citrus oils made two different ways. You can get it still distilled and you can get it expressed. As an aromatherapist, I will only use the expressed, but you can get it distilled. And why would you want it for distilled? Maybe you're cleaning, maybe it's in your bath. Um, citrus oils are known to be phototoxic get to this later. But express citrus oils are phototoxic. Distilled uh, uh, citrus oils are not. So if you're wanting to use oil, uh, citrus oils and not wanting to worry about getting burned or any of those concerns, buy the distilled. Um, but the, the expression is definitely truer. CO2 extraction is, I think, a really like sexy way to extract oils. It is, it is a newer method probably like in the last 10 years and the reason I love it is because heat destroys oils and CO2 there's not an ounce of heat in it so when it comes out it keeps the character of the oil and it keeps the profile of it a little bit um, more true to the plant itself and then there's maceration where they basically take plant flowers and they throw it in some oil and they let it hang out for a while and then there's entourage. Um, and that's how they make the jasmine and the rose, is the petals are put in like coconut oil and they're left to sit there and the oil drips into it and then they extract it from that. So it's just a fancy way they do it. Um, and yeah. And then what are they made from? So myrrh, frankincense is made from resin. Valerian is made from a root. Juniper berry is made from a berry. Sandalwood is from the very inner bark. Uh, peppermint leaf. Uh, is from the or peppermint is from the leaf, nutmeg is from the nut, just about anything. I mean, it's kind of crazy, but they can make oil from just about anything. Um, ooh, the chemistry. This is what I'm saying. Um, okay, so there's a lot going on here, and you are really, I mean, don't let this terrify you. I understand how it could be, but really, I'm just wanting you to understand that when I look at a bottle of oil, this is what I see. Um, so we talk about, you know, the ketones and the phenols and the aldehydes. All of that is important to me because each oil has all this chemistry in it. And, you know, when you say lavender makes you relax, it's because of this chemistry. When you say eucalyptus helps me breathe, it's because of this chemistry. So when I'm looking at the best blends for people or I'm looking at interactions with medications or health issues, this is what I'm looking at to understand what I need from the oils. Um, so it's kind of a roadmap for me. Uh, again, this is just, it's just a lot of terpenes, alcohols, esters. Um, it, it's to help you understand that oils are very complicated and there's many different things that are going on with oils that are important to understand so that you understand it for stability and for skin care and for all the things. So, I know this is a big long list, but remember how I said that I don't buy oils from anybody who doesn't give me the third party testing? Well, this is what I see. So when you um, are looking at this here, you see all this profile here and linalol is in here. And this is what I wanna see and limonene is in here. So there are some components in here that need to be at a certain percentage. So all oils are considered to be within, you know, there's a give or take range, but each oil needs to be in that range to be considered good and viable. And that's how we make it reproducible. And so that's what I see when I get my oils. 
And this one's from Florana. It's in French. It's from France, and I love them. They're wonderful. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. Again, more chemical profile. So um, just showing you all the different ways that I look at the metrics of the oils that come to me when I use them. Um, and so here are the rules of the road. So essential oils don't like oxygen, they don't like heat, they don't like light, they don't like moisture. So what do these things do to your oils that they get in? They break them down. Um, they break them down and make them pretty much useless. So what I tell people is store in a cool, dark place, not in your bathroom, even though it's probably dark in a cabinet, have shower where there's moisture in there. So how do you know that your oils have gone off? Um, they smell different, they look different. So if you get moisture into your oil, if you hold it up to the light, you can actually see that it's cloudy, um, which isn't great. Uh, light, you can open it up and it just smells different. And like I said before, if you have citrus oils, go put them in the fridge. Make a little spot in your fridge to get the best life out of them. Um, because light breaks it down. What happens when your oils break down is if you are putting them on your skin, you're at risk for sensitization and allergies because the oils break down, particularly the citrus ones, where now you're putting them on your skin and your skin could react with an allergic reaction because of that. So very important, um, if you think your oils have gone off, you don't have to throw them out, you can clean with them, right? but I wouldn't even diffuse with them because you're inhaling that up into your membranes and that could also cause a reaction. Um, has anybody, anybody ever had oils go bad on them? No? Does everybody just store them in a cabinet? How do you guys store your oils? I have a little, um, little case that's yeah. got cushion in it and I put it in there and zip it up and keep them in the cupboard. Perfect. And a nice little dark spot. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know if we should really talk about this, but if there are some oil users in the room, I think it's important to understand that certain oils have what we call chemotypes. And chemotypes are based on their chemical composition. And because of that, we use them differently. Um, so for example, a, a rosemary, we have one that's a cineal type and we use that for respiratory. We have a camphor type, which you have to be careful, but it's good for muscles. Um, verbenum, uh, which is can be an arborfactant. So if you're pregnant or trying to get pregnant, you definitely don't want to put that on your body. Um, and then we have a myrcene type, which is a powerful analgesic. So some of the oils like um, basil, thyme, rosemary. If you ever go into the store and you see a CT ketone or verbenum, that's what that is. It's telling you the different chemistry of the rosemary. Um, and then that's a cue as to what you can use it for. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. I think there's something that I skipped, which is kind of out of place, but I'll still add it. So for essential oils, where it's harvested, what time of year, what time of day, all of those things matter to the quality of your oil. So I don't know if you guys ever go online when you're looking at oils and you see Bergamot from Italy versus, what's the other one? I think it's India. You know, you see the different oils from the different places. Mm -hmm. I think the thing you just need to know is the chemistry and know that the oil profile is what you expect it to be. So, um, topical ap application. So what I would say is never apply uh, essential oils undiluted. One, the earth can't sustain it. Number two, you don't need it. As we talk about that therapeutic margin, you want to use as little as possible to get the best benefit. And so if you didn't know each, I, I think this is the most interesting fact, each essential oil has its own dilution factor. So for example, lavender is 
um, if you want to use citrus oils and not have phototoxicity, it's less than 4%. So each oil, I think peppermint's 5%. So each oil has its own. So understanding what each oil is, its percentage um, and its dilution, and I'll share something with you about that on down the road, but it's really important to dilute. So just remember dilution is the solution. Um, <laughs> When, and use caution when using oils that cause photosensitivity. Um, all the citrus oils, except for orange, yeah. cause photosensitivity and angelica. So what does that really mean? It means that if you put it on your skin for 12 to 24 hours, cover that up so that you don't burn. You ever um, been like, you go on vacation or go somewhere and you go get a cocktail and the bartender's hands are like bright red? It's from the lime. Uh, oil in the limes and it's caused a phototoxic reaction just from the limes not even from the oil mm -hmm. so you know lime and bergamot oh, you really have to be careful um, and again for bath mixture so we all know oil and water don't mix uh, so how do we get them to mix so that we can put them in our bath you can't put them in your bath but then you're at risk of like hot spots you know I used to do that when I was before I knew what I was doing I would just dump them in the tub and then you get in the tub and then all of a sudden there are areas in your skin that are a little warm. Um, <laughs> so I like to use something like Natrazorb, which you can get right off Amazon or you can go to Soluble. You can get Soluble as well. Um, and those are, those, those allow the oil and water to break down into such little particles that you don't get hot spots in the tub. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to do a bath mixture, you know, salt is not enough. Um, salt is not enough. Like if you put it in like coconut milk, that's not enough. You need to have something with a little bit of detergent in it to break it down. Um, and if you have, um, we haven't really talked about this, I guess I should. Always consult with your physician if you're taking med medication or have a medical condition. So. If you're um, epileptic, there are some oils that have the potential to trigger mm -hmm. a seizure. If you are trying to get pregnant, marjoram is a no-go because it can cause, it can be an arborfactant. Um, if you have high blood pressure, the warm oils like peppermint, wintergreen, thyme, black pepper can raise your blood pressure if it's not controlled. So there are, times when it is important to check with your doctor and just say, hey doc, is this okay? Um, you always want to, uh, chem chemotherapy drugs can cause you to be photosensitive and then if you're using essential oils, um, it can also cause you to be photosensitive. And you know, while we talked a little bit about ingestion and you really need to work with somebody like myself if you're gonna do ingestion, if you were to put, like, I had a client um, who came to me and she had a lot of sun damage on her face and we couldn't really understand. And then as we started talking, she was telling me about the lemon oil that she was drinking. And I said, can we just go back to that and, you know, talk about what that is? And she would just been putting a drop of lemon in her water, you know, every day because it tastes good. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sure it does. Um, but the thing about that is now systemically you're causing sun sensitivity. Mm -hmm. The other thing is I didn't do it and I should have. I was going to bring a balloon. Go home if you have lemon oil. Take a balloon. Put one drop of lemon oil on it and see how quick your balloon pops. It's less <laughs> than three seconds. Okay. So oil and water don't mix. So you're putting that in your tea or your water and then you're drinking that. Well, that's hitting your enamel on your teeth, but it's going to take off your enamel going down your esophagus, which is really hard and really hard on your gut. Um, so, you know, even though it seems like it's fun, um, lemon, lemon squeezed into your water is a much healthier thing. And personally me, I would never, um, I would never ingest essential oils. I would go to hydrozoles first. The hydrozoles are what we call flower water. So when you're distilling the oils, there is water that comes off, and that is ingestion grade. You have to have ingestion grade hydrosols, but that is something much gentler. Um, so there are much better alternatives than 
to ingestion of oils. And these are just, this is a really old slide that I slipped in here. Um, but it, for topical application, you can say, see that even for like face cosmetics, it's 0.2 to 1.5%, but you can put much more on your body, you know, and the bath even more because that's not considered a stay on product. Um, pain and wounds, we use a fair bit of essential oil because we can use it for a short amount of time. Um, even, even the age that you are. Like me personally would not use essential oils with children under two. I would use hydrazoles, but I, under, under two I wouldn't because their bodies are still developing and um, oils are very powerful. Uh, and then we grade how much we give them from ages two to six, basically. You know, if, if you are 75, 80 and above, we consider that more fragile. So then we also choose to use less because it's more effective and it's gentler on the system. Um, pregnant and nursing, depending on the oil. So as you can see, each area of application and then whatever age you are or, or population you fit in, even that changes according to that. So I hope this doesn't seem scary to you. Um, it's just, there's a lot that goes to it. And this is a really helpful guide. So if you guys have oils at home and you're wondering about dilution, you can either look up Robert Tisserin Institute and you should be able to find this, or you can just Google dilution guideline on your, um, on your computer. But this will tell you how many drops to put in your oil, your carrier, to know the percentage so that you can do it correctly and you're you know not using more than you should carrier oil so you can use jojoba i love olive aloe vera i use lotion um bath mixes we talked about the solubilizer room sprays okay does anybody make their own room sprays no if you were to make your own room spray, again, you'd want like a soluble or a detergent in there to break up the oil in the water, but also know that water breeds bacteria. So you need to either keep it in the fridge and it'll last you like four to five days and then you dump it out and you start all over again. Um, so unless you put a preservative in it. So if you make your own, just make sure to refrigerate it, use some alcohol and don't keep it for more than, you know, four or five. Diffusion. Ooh, so this is a this is a debate in our community about how long you really diffuse. But your body will tell you. Um, so what I would say to you is that the studies that have been done is that after 30 minutes, there's saturation in your blood when you diffuse. Mm -hmm. So like like I mentioned before, you filter your oils through the kidney and the liver. So you don't want to tax your kidney and liver. So diffusing, having a diffuser that has a timer that goes on and off, so on 30, 45 minutes and then turn off um, is really the best. You know, and some people are like, but I like the smell, I want it all day long. So then I tell them, just back off, just, you know, do two <clears throat> drops, just enough for a light scent. When you're diffusing, it should never be a wall of scent. Um, it should just be very light, very fragrant. Uh, but you don't want to tax your body, you don't want to tax your organs, you know, and yes, you can diffuse all day long, just do it in 30, 45 minute increments, you know, on off, on off to give your body a little bit of a break. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you know that you have overexposure? Headache, nausea, dizziness, shortness of breath, stomach upset, urinary disturbances. I mean, you'll kind of know because you'll feel off or something will be wrong. The great thing about diffusing oils, if you've over like diffuse is you just go into a clear room just walk out go into a clear room and you know within 10 15 minutes your headache should be gone and you should be feeling better so um yeah any questions about that any thoughts about that it's very informative because i would at work <clears throat> i run the diffuser all day long <laughs> 
and it's but it's been fine for you <clears throat> it has yeah 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 um yeah i mean this is you know the thing about this is is all the recommendations that i'm giving to you guys is because i want you to be able to use oils for the rest of your lives and you know some of the things when i talk about allergies or um allergic reactions sensitivities what we see is not that it's usually long-term use like years like a decade of somebody ingesting or not diluting and then all of a sudden you put it on your body and your body's like nope i'm not having any of this i, mm -hmm. I i'm just done and that's actually what we see a lot is then all of a sudden your body just is like i'm done and then you can't use oils or that oil and you know so yeah so wanting you guys to use oils for, for as long as you want to use them mm -hmm. Yeah, so has anybody ever had an allergic reaction from your oils that they know of? No? That's great. Um, yeah, mild redness of the skin, red and slightly thickened skin, swollen skin, water blisters, redness, breathing difficulties. Um, yeah, I mean, the other thing, the way that you can also get it if it's on your skin and you want it off is you can use some soap and water or you can use some milk which will break down the fat and the oil. So if you put something on you and you're like, uh-uh, use some soap and water right away or, and then dump some milk over it. I know it sounds crazy, but it works. Um, yeah. Okay, yes. What you want to talk about? So photosensitivity, um, we talked about this a little bit. Uh, lemon, lime, grapefruit, bergamot, angelica. Technically speaking, Anybody who does, like in all my blends, if there is any of these oils in there, they are at the recommended percent or below um, for that reason. But even then, if I know I'm going to go sit on a beach, and I even with one of my blends, if there is lemon or any of these in there, I actually won't put it on or I'll cover up because I'm still concerned that that could burn me. Um, and then that puts you at risk for other things that you don't want. Whew. I, I thought about putting a picture in here of somebody that got uh, a essential oil in their eye, uh -huh. but it was too terrifying and I didn't <laughs> want to freak everybody out, but their eye was like all blue. Oh. It just was like this. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it, but heaven forbid you get it in your eyes. Um, what you could do is use a cotton ball with a fatty oil or milk to wash it off. So you want to put it on the cotton ball and you just kind of want to swipe it away. If you have contacts, you definitely want to get them out um, and then just keep flushing your eye. And, and I have, uh, I did once get it in my eye and I just used milk. I literally did the swabbing thing with the fatty oil. And then at the end, I literally tipped my head and just dip some milk in there to just kind of <laughs> soothe my eye. So, um, but that was when I was younger. And I <laughs> did not learn to put the glasses on. Now I know better. Um, the other thing is if you guys are working with essential oils, wear gloves if you're, if you're using them a lot. I mean, again, you know, I said dilution is the solution. If you spill a couple drops on your hands, it's fine. You know, but if you are like going to be DIYing it and you're going to start making yourself some stuff, just go get some gloves and put some gloves on while you make it and just protect your skin. I think the worst thing that would happen to you is your skin would dry out. But you know, you just want to protect your skin. Yeah, so we talked about this earlier diffusion, inhalation, you fill to the line um, and you add three to 10 drops of essential oil, it really depends on your vessel, right? So you just have to kind of work with that vessel and see. I strongly urge you to allow your diffuser, if it has water in it, to dry out every night. Dump it out, rinse it out, and dry it out. Otherwise, you are literally blowing microbes into the air. So, um, especially if you have, you know, a fragile patient, you know, certainly in the hospitals at children, they don't use diffusers um, for that very reason. You know, and there are really fun ways to diffuse. So I love my 
my little things and I have like all these necklaces that I can diffuse and so you can make it really fun and find fun ways to diffuse through the day that are really personal and if you don't want to get fancy a cotton ball under your pillow two or three drops of a cotton ball under your pillow and that also is just a really easy way so and aromatherapy organization so um, there's NAHA, which is the National Association of Holistic Aromatherapy. I'm part of the Alliance of International Aromatherapists. There's also an International Fragrance Association and a Federation of Professional Aromatherapists. And I, these are a bunch of trustworthy sites. Um, if you're interested, there is an adverse reactions database. So if you actually were just curious about going online and seeing, um, <coughs> The reactions that have happened to people this is self-reporting so people mm -hmm. go into the database and they self-report you could go in and look at kind of their stories about you know what's happened I find them really interesting because I think it's really useful and helpful mm -hmm. um, I call it the book the essential oil safety if you're really into oils and want to get more into your oils essential oil safety is what I call the essential oil Bible it is all of the chemistry the dilution rates, um, everything that you would need to know about oils. Um, it's very thick, <laughs> I will tell you that. Um, and there's lots of really fun, does any, uh, fun websites online. So has anybody been to Aroma, uh, been on to AromaWeb.com? That is a, that is my favorite site of all is AromaWeb.com. <coughs> it's actually um, started by a fellow um, ACHS graduate. But it gives you lots of fun, easy, <coughs> useful snippets uh, to um, check out oils. Um, Leah Harris, uh, a guide to using essential oils safely. Leah Harris is really about if you want to make oils or you want recipes, she'll do that. You can go online and join her club. Um, and then, you know, Essential Oil University, Robert Tessarian, who's the godfather of essential, modern day godfather of essential yeah, so that's it. Cool, that's great. I gave you a lot of information. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry awesome. I talked at you so much. No, Thank you. That's, that's great. Awesome. Yeah. So, do you guys have any comment or 